Hey everybody, thank you for joining me. It's 12 o'clock and on Wednesday, so you know what time that is. It's time to start Bergen in Color Live. Hey, good morning, or good afternoon, technically afternoon. Thank you for joining me. Um, we're going to get started in just a second. Um, I was trying to paste some information that I wanted you guys to have, but it's all good. It's not It's not letting me be great. But um, my name is Teva Francis, and I'm the publisher of Bergen in Color, connecting to the diversity of Bergen County and beyond. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I know that there are a lot of lives going on uh uh, at this time, at other times, and there's a lot of things pulling you in various directions. But thank you for watching um, Bergen and Color Live because my goal with this platform is to connect um, those in this area, in North Jersey, especially people of color, to resources, information, updates that are relevant to their experience here. Um, I uh, hope that this will be able to grow beyond uh, the COVID-19 situation, but right now this is where we're living and this is what we're dealing with now. So I want to be able to have relevant information that will help you in your everyday life in navigating this whole crisis. Um, we want to be able to uh, show you that um, there are people who look like us, who are working on our behalf, who are... Um, uh, leading initiatives, programs, and what have you that are there to help us, um, especially during this critical time. Uh, so again, this is Bergen in Color Live. My name is Tevra, um, and we are connecting you to the diversity of Bergen County and beyond. Beyond, shout out to our neighbors in Passaic, Hudson, Essex, Morris, and Sussex counties. Um, if you're from any of those counties or just shout out where you where you are right now um, so that we can know where, where, where our people are. Um, we're growing every week and and we want to just make sure that we're trying to that we are uh, including people where they are in this area. Not everybody lives in Inglewood, Hackensack and uh, Teaneck. A lot of our friends do, and we shout out to them all the time. But we want to also recognize our neighbors in all of these neighboring towns and cities um, and, and uh, municipalities. So, hey, y'all. Um, so a couple of brief uh, updates before I get into our first guest. So uh, check your inbox because, hey, we got a uh, Passaic County. We got a Hudson County. Hey, guys. Um, so yeah, check your inbox because what I've discovered is that, um, the Bergen and Color newsletter sometimes will go in your spam folder. So just, you know, mark it as not spam because we are not spam and, uh, get the information. So what I do with each week, I announce who is going to be on today's show, but I also include uh, resources from their various organizations. So there's some really good information from, um, Assemblywoman Shavonda Sumter that you need to have regarding rent. Uh, renters, protections, mortgage, uh, forbearance, and um, unemployment um, that I kind of paraphrased. Hey, Bergen County rep. Um, and I also have um, information from uh, Team Management 2000 regarding behavioral health and uh, social services. So open that email, forward it on to someone who needs it. And um, as we grow that, you know, each week that email is a different email. So go backwards and see if there's any information in, in some of our past um, email blasts that is relevant to you. Um, and as we come out of this, because I'm hoping that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, uh, not soon. Stay home. Don't be like, you know, our cousins on TV outside doing the most. But when there's a light at the end of the tunnel, we want to be able to uh, transition this platform into something that is more social, getting back to what Bergen and Color originally was, which is lifestyle philanthropy, community activism, um, business promotion, all of those fun things that make Bergen County and North Jersey what it is. We want to get back to that at some point, but right now we just want to be a resource to people um, uh, and be useful. So um, let's go ahead and keep going. I want to um, ask you to join the mailing list if you haven't done so already and uh, go to our our website at www.bergenandcolor.com to complete the 2020 survey um, and just give us your thoughts about, you know, what do you think about Bergen and Color Live or what do you want to see on the website when, it's, when it is launched? What content is helpful to you? So help us out with that. Also, business owners, uh, join our free business directory. I'm not, uh, you know, touting to be a network 
of, of business owners. I'm not doing any of that. I just want to have a directory so that we know that when I want to get my nails done, when we can go outside again, I know who to go to. Or if there's a realtor that um, I need to to you know help me with some real estate transactions, I know who to go to. So just go ahead and add your business. Um, if it's your own business, go ahead and add your business to our free directory um, of businesses. Um, later on, there will be advertising opportunities available as well. Um, and then as we go along again, we want to shout out last week's guests. So last week we had on Inglewood Mayor Michael Wilds. Um, we had Nicole Davis of the Center for Food Action. And we had Brenda Green of Fit for a Better Me. It was a great conversation. Lots of useful information. Go ahead and access that through our YouTube channel. All of our, pa well, most of our past episodes are on there as well. You could watch them at your leisure. Um, you'll see, you know, Sheriff Curriton and Councilwoman Romney Rice. Um, lots of good conversations in those in those past episodes. So go ahead and, and log on to YouTube at Bergen and Color to, to check those out. So while we add our first um, guest for today, Assemblywoman Shavonda Sumter, our accomplishments really quickly because she is somebody that you all don't know her already. Hey, how are you? Uh -huh. Sounds kind of wonky. Can you hear me? I can. I'm connecting. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Okay, there you are. Okay. All right. So I was just giving you a brief bio. There's a little bit of a bit of a feedback situation going on. Um, so let me know if you, can, if you have trouble hearing me. You're clear on my end. Okay. So really quickly, um, Assemblywoman Sumter represents the 35th district that includes parts of Bergen and Passaic counties. She is vice chair of the state and local government committee, a member of the labor and public safety committee. She recognizes that her legislation transcends her district and impacts the 9 million people in the state of New Jersey. She is a staunch advocate for job growth, women's health, voting rights, civil rights, and criminal justice reform. Um, I'm going to skip because I keep hearing a... Uh, a feedback. So I want you to give the rest of your bio. <laughs> sure. Well, thank you. Thank you, Tevra. And you are great. Uh, so I heard your intro. Thank you for making sure we're being creative and reaching out to people with this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, reaching out to Bergen, Passaic, Hudson, uh, Essex County, Morris County, and Sussex County. So all territories we need to connect with folks on. Uh, so I am Assemblywoman Shavonda Sumter, representing both Passaic and Bergen County. Uh, I serve as a mental health professional by day. I've been in the legislature since 2012. I'm excited because we are doing some great things uh, during this pandemic and people in New Jersey have proven to be Jersey strong. Uh, we really supported each other. We've done the physical distancing known as social distancing so we can flatten the curve, uh, but it hasn't been without great suffering, especially in the African-American community. Mm -hmm. as well as our counterparts. Uh, this is a tough time for us, uh, but I am happy that we're being creative and we're staying connected. Yes. So thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate you taking this time. You have a lot of information. You sent uh, me um, several bits of information that are all very important to us. So I just wanted to just dive right into it. Um, the first thing on our, our uh sheet is the eviction moratorium. So I want you to just delve into that really quickly for all of our watchers. So as we know, with this pandemic, uh, employees have been furloughed. They've been tasked with staying at home, uh, incomes, financial insecurities. Uh, we don't know the extent, but we do know in New Jersey, there's been over 1 million unemployment claims. I'm mm -hmm. proud that one of the first bills signed or, uh, by the governor, as well as telephonically voted on for the first time in the history in New Jersey, uh, because we also had to be creative in how we uh, conducted the people's business of New Jersey, was to be sure that temporary uh, unemployment was available to folks who would have been and who are now furloughed uh, in the state of New Jersey and can't go to their places of business. Mm -hmm. uh, with that said, uh, paying rent has become a challenge for folks, so we wanted to make sure uh, that evictions did not occur because we can't afford homelessness, especially when we're telling folks to stay home and in a safe place and to isolate in place uh, for the health, public safety of all of our folks. Uh, so we got that piece in order. Uh, okay. Another big one just signed uh, by executive order by the governor yesterday was the uh, mortgage um, taxes. 
uh, mm -hmm. delay where your taxes for those homeowners who own their home, who have worked hard to keep them and taxes were due on May 1st with a potential 18% mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. increase. If you miss that May 1st deadline, yes. it's moved yes. to June. So another big savings, trying to keep people safe in their homes without the stress and anxiety of worried about uh, whether they can pay their mortgage or pay their rent or be evicted. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're really, really trying to make sure that we meet the basic human needs of mm -hmm. all of the citizens of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So with the, let's go back to some of the issues with renting and, and the landlord situation. So one of the things that I've seen in various platforms is that although these executive orders have gone out, uh, a lot of the renters feel as though their landlord or landlord or, or whoever property management companies are doing their own thing and, and um, harassing them for uh, rent when they know it's a, a struggle right now for people who are not working. Can you speak to that as well, at all? Uh, what we've been asking folks to do is uh, to report uh, what I'll do when we get off of this um, IG Live is I'll send you a link where folks can report up to because it's important that we have the feedback on how these uh, orders are being enacted mm -hmm. uh, and if folks are being harassed with bad actors mm -hmm. um, and we need to make sure that there is a remedy uh, for folks to report. Uh, we're really looking for everyone to be humane at this point in time. This is nothing that any individual uh, in the state of New Jersey has asked to be experiencing. No. Right. Or, right. <laughs> so uh, so let's keep that in mind. So as much as it is a struggle for uh, property owners, um, as well as renters, we're asking for everyone and, and mortgage owners uh, to be uh, patient, uh, to report up, to elevate the issues so we can address them as they come to us. It's been seven weeks of us dealing with this since March yeah. 1st. Mm -hmm. Right. We've mm -hmm. really done a remarkable job in um, transitioning our state and making sure that we do what's reasonable and pragmatic really to come into mm -hmm. play, but we do need our federal partners. So I don't want to leave that out. We've asked, we made a big ax of the federal government to support us because we have blown our budget similar to households within a seven week window. Can you give us more of it? We all know the issues with our federal government. I don't want to mention he who will not be named, but can you just kind of give us more of an insight as to the struggle the states are having with he who will not be named? <laughs> right. So he who will not be named or mm -hmm. 46 minus one. Um, I like that as a clever name because definitely something's missing there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're talking about New Jersey partnering with uh, seven other states in our region. Uh, I have to commend Governor Murphy and the administration uh, for really doubling down on elevating our needs. We put in our federal request. The first request was for ventilators. Again, you know, me being in healthcare, seeing firsthand on the front line uh, the need to provide uh, care, respiratory mm -hmm. therapists, our healthcare workers, our ancillary workers. Shout mm -hmm. out to them uh, mm -hmm. because keeping the facilities clean so we can care for the loved ones who were in their most critical state of being, all important. And we had to fight and scrap uh, for those. Uh, objects, not objects, for those uh, supplies and equipment uh, for our healthcare professionals to care for the people in need. Uh, okay. Now we're fighting for uh, dollars because there's a cost. There is a cost uh, for us stopping our economy. There's a cost to towns uh, mm -hmm. that have to pay our workers who are still taking care of the sanitary needs uh, mm -hmm. of our communities. There is a cost to keep the lights on. There's a cost to businesses who mm -hmm. have to shut their doors. So we want to make sure that they have an opportunity to access some of the uh, programs and incentives that we put in place. Uh, so really talking to Senator Booker, who just celebrated a birthday the other day, oh, uh, Senator that. Menendez, uh, they have been constant, constant stewards and crafters of legislation to make sure that our needs are known and in talking with us as members of the legislature and vulnerable communities uh, mm -hmm. to make sure that our concerns are elevated. So I'm pleased with New Jersey's leadership, uh, but mm -hmm. we have a lot of work to do and we can only do it with folks like you, Tevra, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that our voices are heard and that we know the concerns of our communities. Okay, that's, that's, that's helpful because that kind of leads us into our next question. Um, the road back, that was yes. released this week and um, I posted 
the slides on uh, the Instagram page, but I want I to that. discuss more of what that means to, well, what it is, the road back, and then what it means to um, our communities, you know, Bergen Passaic and people of color in particular. So the, the road to recovery, I'm pleased that I was appointed to the legislature's task force for the road to recovery to restart our economy. Uh, mm -hmm. The key for us, for Say County, I'm also pleased to announce for Patterson in particular, uh, we're going to have testing sites starting next week. I heard from Mayor Andre Saya that that's going to be occurring uh, because uh, the governor has said we will not restart our uh, economy in New Jersey if we don't have testing uh, for mm -hmm. um, the needs of our state. We also need contact tracing Mm -hmm. Because I know some folks are carriers positive. We don't know what that means. The okay. ability to isolate in place or away from families, uh, folks who live in multi-unit dwellings, making sure that they have a safe place to isolate is critical for us so that they can heal and be cared for. Mm -hmm. uh, and really uh, rapid testing, please, with Rutgers, again, New Jersey, uh, doing some good stuff and being creative and innovative coming up with a saliva-based test that was approved by the FDA uh, okay. that will be online uh, for us to be able to get our folks tested uh, so that we can go back online safely and not have another wave. Uh, we don't believe that the coronavirus is going away, but we do believe that our response will be smarter to the coronavirus. Okay. Um, economically, I know the one of the main reasons why people are so upset about um, what's going on is because of um, the impact economic, economically that it's had on all of us. And so yes. how do we plan to phase into um, getting New Jersey back to work? So that's going to be part of my discussion. Uh, and any feedback, any comments, concerns that uh, you or your viewers come up with, please make sure that you hit me up. I'm at at, uh, at Shavonda Sumter uh, on Facebook, on IG. Uh, mm -hmm. It's important that we hear from people on what they feel we can do uh, to get the economy up and running, what their needs are. We know that the CARES Act federal government for the SBA loans, small business loans, mm -hmm. uh, were exhausted. Uh, within the first week system crash because so many people were tapping into it. We want to make sure that we're providing the right incentives. Uh, we know that there may be some credit uh, issues uh, for folks where they can't leverage credit. So we're going to be, again, trying to partner with our private sector banks, lending institutions, so that there's some uh, leeway and flexibility there. A lot of sole proprietorships, LLCs, uh, in the African-American community, there's about 80,000 small businesses just mm -hmm. in the state of New Jersey uh, mm -hmm. that may not have access to capitalize on the lending that's put in place. So uh, it's going to be a, a double down journey uh, that we're ready for, ready to tackle. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to be Jersey strong about it all the way. Yeah. So um, you touched on the, the issues with the SBA loans, the PPP loans. We heard uh, there has been the whole, you know, there's going to be a reason yeah. funds. What, Correct. What's going on? Like, as a small business owner, what, what's really going on? Are we, are we supposed to look to that as like a beacon of hope or should we just need to just, you know, redirect our efforts into, um, you know, bootstrapping it from here on out? A combination of the two, Tevra. We, we don't do these programs um, so that we're not capitalizing on them. Uh, okay. What my, my hope is that, uh, uh, that the small businesses, especially in New Jersey, considering how much money we send back to the federal government, mm -hmm. we need to tap into these funds. Also, just a quick sidebar, please, 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 if you haven't filled out your 2020 census, please complete your 2020 census, because that, again, dictates based on population size and response how much resources we get back from the federal government for all our programs, roads, bridges, uh, schools, Medicaid, Medicare, uh, that we receive back from the federal government. But we need our folks who are small businesses to apply. If you're not in it, just like the lottery, you can't win it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's helpful to know. So you talked about the census. Uh, we want everybody to complete their census. The last time I checked, we were at like 44% uh, response rate. Has that improved? And 
What it, can we do to get people to do it? <laughs> we got to do it while, while we're home. Please, please, please go to 2020census.gov. Uh, let's get over that 50% threshold. Uh, we need to push mm -hmm. uh, so that we can get uh, some resources, some dollars back in our state. We need to push to get that census done. So please, 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 you can complete it online. You can complete a home uh, census report, but online is the easiest way. It just takes you a couple of minutes, about 10. And just to kind of give some real life examples or right now examples as to why the census is so important. You shared a um, slide to me about food banks in the area. And so a lot of the funding that these programs receive is based on the numbers that are are received from the census. So the funding for these things in crisis situations like these, if they don't know that we all are here. So um, can you just kind of discuss some of those programs that are available in your uh, district? So I want to thank um, our, our food banks who have been available for people who uh, at one time was providing for themselves, but now find themselves a little insecure with being able to provide food. Mm -hmm. uh, Kumac, uh, which is in Patterson on Ellison Street, is open for food deliveries. Eva's Village, um, also in Patterson, open for uh, food. Uh, Center for Food Action, that's in Hackensack. I believe you had them on your program last week, uh -huh. uh, last week as well. Uh, shout out to them. They're in Hackensack. Uh, Passaic County, Father English. Uh, food mm -hmm. pantries available in Oasis also has the food pantry available. These mm -hmm. places are safe. They're doing safe physical distancing. They're masking. They're gloving. Mm -hmm. Please don't feel ashamed. Please don't feel that someone needs it more than you. So you do not want to tap into this vital resource for you and your families. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that people are accessing and getting the food and nourishment that they need as they uh, remain quarantined in place at home. That's good information as well. Um, so to kind of every, to every white week that I do this, I try to have some type of a mental health, mental wellness type of component. But I see that in your bio, you're also in be behavioral health and you're also a health yes. administrator like me. Hey. <laughs> and so, um, I want you to speak to the, um, the mental health component of this within your capability. Like what do you want people to know during this time? I want people to know that it's important to have a, a mindfulness of your own mental health, your mm -hmm. own wellness check. If you're feeling anxious, turn the TV off. If you're watching a little bit too much of the news, uh, give yourself limits on how much you intake and find legitimate sources so you're not mm -hmm. as frustrated and edgy. Uh, another mm -hmm. big tip is uh, patience. Uh, mm -hmm. While we're quarantined together with family members, it can become intense. Uh, mm -hmm. Create that safe space, even for children. If yeah. it's building a tent uh, for the kids that they invite you into, don't go in unless they invite you into. <laughs> <laughs> if it's finding that bathroom time for mom, mm -hmm. you know we like that bathroom time. Mm -hmm. And it's making sure people in the household respect that time where you're in the bathroom. So you just have that, that moment of serenity that you create for yourself. If mm -hmm. it's taking a walk and getting some fresh air on those sunny days or just to get some air standing in your backyard on your front mm -hmm. porch, uh, take those moments. These are little things that we can do mm -hmm. uh, to keep a peace of mind, to uh, remain calm uh, during this time. But if you need help, if you find that you or a loved one are in a space that's not a good mind space, you're not coping well, I want you to call our state mental health support line at 1-800-202-HELP. Again, it's 1-800-202-HELP. It's no charge. There's someone who will answer, who will be there just to help talk you through whatever it is you may be feeling because it's all legit. Give yourself permission to feel what you're feeling. Okay. I don't have an intern today, so I'll send all this out later. <laughs> but that's 1-800-202-HELP. Okay. Yes. So um, last question, how are you doing like, this is a lot. You have a lot of responsibility on your yeah. plate. You're a mom. You're a wife. How are you doing? So there are moments, and, and you take it moment by moment. Uh, mm -hmm. As moms, uh, we know that we take a lot on our shoulder. This mm -hmm. is one time where I actually had to tell myself, I don't have to bear it all. I don't mm -hmm. have to carry it all. Mm -hmm. uh, so really partnering with my husband, uh, giving him the support. Uh, that he needs. He's been working at home. He works for um, the school system. So they've been home and a little cabin fever there. 
our 20 year old who's in college um, is a whole different level. So again, finding space and time to make sure that he's well. I have a daughter who's in Albany and she's working from home and gets a little cabin fever. So FaceTime, uh, Mm -hmm. Zoom, all those mediums work. Uh, So really being creative. Uh, Me, myself, I I take my mental health and my mindfulness and my wellness seriously. Uh, So I'm pretty good about self-regulating and slowing down when uh, required. And I take things in doses. Uh, Being Mm -hmm. an elected official, uh, the needs are great. But knowing that I have 80 members of the legislature, I have the Legislative Black Caucus, I have a governor who's accessible, that's working with me, I have a congressional team and a Senate delegation, Mm-hmm. Now is the time where you draw on your resources and mm-hmm. family and spirituality. It's yeah. been fun to visit churches online because that yeah. is essential to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a creative way of doing it, but it's important that you keep to some routines. Yeah. Uh, so that way it keeps you in a safe uh, mental health space and a wellness space. Okay. So any last uh, thoughts that you want to share with our audience? I, I truly want to thank you, Tevra, for being creative uh, with Bergen and Color for coming to the people uh, where they can't necessarily get to you in public spaces. You're doing a wonderful job. Thank you. Um, I know that this will survive. Post that and for the newsletters and for sharing the information because we all need to partner together mm-hmm. so that we can keep everybody informed and make sure we're addressing the needs of the people. So thank you for being a partner with me in this journey. Thank you. And Aisha Taylor Issa says she misses you, Shavonda. <laughs> uh, miss her and love her to life. Yeah, that's my girl. Okay, so um, uh, Assemblywoman Sumter, we thank you so much for your time. Thank you for all the information that you shared. If uh, Again, those of you who received the Bergen in Color newsletter, go to your newsletter and there's uh, links and information regarding renters, protections, mortgage help, and uh, unemployment as well. I, I included that. And yes. I have actually some more. I'll probably send out another email blast with the additional um, contacts. But we have a lot of information from uh, uh, Assemblywoman Sumter that um, you guys need to access. So thank you for your time. Thank you to thank you. Uh, Shaylin. She's awesome. <laughs> thank you for her as well. That's your assistant? Yeah, Shay, Shay Biv does her thing. So thank you, Shaylin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to hop off, but thank you so much. All right. Take care. Be safe. Uh-huh. <laughs> you too. Okay, guys. So um, that was Assemblywoman Shavonda Sumter. And um, she's awesome. So if you uh, have any questions, you can go to her page at Shavonda Sumter. Um, I don't have an intern today. So at Shavonda Sumter is her email or her, her Instagram and her um, and her website is ShavondaEsumter.com, I believe. So um, thank you for uh, that uh, Assemblywoman Sumter. So we're going to keep it moving because I don't want to keep you guys all day, but I just want to give you a quick reminder. Um, Our friends at Never Alone Again Resource Center, they had a really um, demanding week of uh, people needing assistance, which means that they need assistance and and support from the rest of us who are able to, thank you, Shaylin, um, who are able to support them. So neveralonegain.org is a... um, is the resource center that supports uh, women and children affected by domestic violence. And during this COVID crisis, they've also been a location where uh, food supplies, um, supplies including that and and most importantly, diapers, wipes, all of those things that kids need that um, we forget about during this time, all of that stuff, formula. um, There are several people in this area that need our assistance. So uh, neveralonegain.org, Never Alone Again Resource Center, they need our help. So let's help our community as well. Um, Also, the Center for Food Action is taking monetary donations. um, And they are the Center for Food Action, uh, cfanj.org, I believe. Okay, so we're going to uh, keep it moving. We're going to talk to Ms. Gray Booker. And she, let me make sure she's on here. Add. Okay, remember, I don't have an intern today. So, um, Gray Booker is uh, the VP of Marketing and Community Relations for Team Management 2000 Incorporated. Hey, Hi. Gray. Hi, I'm trying to position. There you are. Okay. How are you? I'm good. How are you? 
I'm well, thank you. Okay, so I'm just I'm giving you a, a quick bio. So Gray is the uh, VP of Marketing and Community Relations for Team Management 2000 Incorporated. Um, TM2K is a 501c3 nonprofit community-based integrative behavioral health care organization. <laughs> These big words. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, based, uh, well, and licensed intensive outpatient ambulatory facility uh, through the state of New Jersey addiction services, as well as the substance abuse and mental health services administration. Um, it might be my phone where I'm getting this feedback situation, so I want you to just give us more information about uh, TM2K Incorporated. Okay, so um, Team Management 2000 is, like you said, an integrated behavioral health care facility. Mm -hmm. um, we have two facilities, one that's based in Hackensack that services Bergen and Passaic counties, and then we have one that is based in Newark that services the Newark greater area, including um, Hudson County. Um, so we service a multitude of different populations, many of them at risk, mm -hmm. very diverse, um, but of course, many of the socioeconomic um, issues that we focus on greatly impact communities of color. So mm -hmm. we specialize in mental health services, mm -hmm. uh, addiction um, treatment and services, and also HIV and AIDS education, prevention, and testing. Um, we work with everyone from you know, executives that work mm -hmm. in Fortune 500 companies to mm -hmm. individuals who are literally homeless and living in cardboard boxes mm -hmm. on the street. Mm -hmm. So um, what we've learned from our work is that none of these things discriminate. Of course, mm -hmm. they no. affect each community differently depending upon the um, disparities in that community. Mm -hmm. But overall, you know, mental health, um, holistic health overall mm -hmm. is important mm -hmm. to all of us and mm -hmm. to all of our families so that's what we do in a okay. nutshell <laughs> <laughs> so specifically to the services i see that you guys have like ryan white funded hiv aids services for um you have uh services for youth and young adults you have so give us like a bullet point really quickly of the specific services you have re-entry services like yes yes yeah <laughs> so as i said <laughs> We are, we facilitate services to many at risk populations. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the focus of our services lie in mental health, mm -hmm. substance abuse treatment, and then HIV and AIDS education. So, mm -hmm. any populations that need those services, mm -hmm. aging and range from 13 to 24, mm -hmm. which is classified as youth mm -hmm. and beyond, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's who we service. So, we mm -hmm. service everyone mm -hmm. seniors um you know all faiths all mm -hmm. ethnicities mm -hmm. um in our different facilities though our populations are distinctly different in our bergen mm -hmm. county facility our populations are very diverse mm -hmm. um we do have more of a caucasian mm -hmm. population in that facility but that's mm -hmm. because of the makeup there mm -hmm. um in our newark uh facility our client base is primarily african-american and latino mm -hmm. and we do have caucasian patients there as well but considering mm -hmm. the environment um the economic level mm -hmm. and then also the populations of the uh, uh, local cities and towns that we service they are pretty much primarily made up of minorities okay. so that's our target population there Mm-hmm. Okay. And then uh with um so with the all of the populations that you, you provide services for through uh team management two thousand, we are all under a mandatory stay at home order. So how has your work shifted now that well you tell it. <laughs> okay. So um our executive director and CEO who also happens to be my mother. Miss Ava. Is, yes, Miss Ava. Her <laughs> name is Ava Faustin. Mm -hmm. um, we began conversations prior to actually going into a mandated quarantine mm -hmm. of how we were going to transition our services to mm -hmm. a um, remotely based 
service structure, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And implement these changes remotely while everybody works at home. Because she's very um, adamant about protecting the health of not only our patients, but our mm -hmm. staff. Mm -hmm. um, we already have, you know, mountains of stress to deal with mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in regards to the workloads and mm -hmm. subject matters that we're tackling on a daily mm -hmm. basis mm -hmm. to not have to worry about our physical and mental yeah. health yeah. as well. Yeah. So we definitely made a shift very early on, I would mm -hmm. say about the second week of March mm -hmm. into working remotely. I mean, we made trips periodically to the office to either get files and to, yeah. you know, do little things here and there. But for the most part, we jumped on those digital devices, set up these platforms, and we were good to go. And you guys are still HIPAA compliant. Let's make that clear. At, well, let's yeah. let's um, clarify some things. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the good news or the gift that we received in the midst of all of this was that the federal government definitely adapted new practices to okay. conform to these unforeseen circumstances. Yeah. You can't deliver services to people under the the um regulations that they had in place prior to this right mm -hmm. so they had to adapt new laws new regulations so that we could serve this populations because now the need for mental health services the need mm -hmm. for addiction services mm -hmm. the need for um homelessness assistance the need for i mean they let individuals who are low-level offenders yeah. out of prison and they had nowhere to go. So how do yeah. you service these people and still remain compliant? Yeah. We had to adopt a new way of servicing these populations. And mm -hmm. um, they gave us the green light to mm -hmm. deliver services remotely and telemedically, even without certain infrastructure. In okay. place. You know, we utilize Zoom. We utilize our smartphones mm -hmm. to a certain capacity, I mean, certain capacity. Mm -hmm. um, and they have also just given us uh, a different blueprint to work with as mm -hmm. to how we can deliver these services because they're urging us to do so. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have the medical professionals who are under excruciating stress. Mm -hmm. You know, you have mm -hmm. individuals who are losing family members, friends, colleagues mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. You have our staff internally who have lost individuals mm -hmm. and, you know, are dealing with people that have multi-level uh, uh, stresses that they're mm -hmm. dealing with. So I think, you know, as Assemblywoman Sumter said, um, in regards to... Um, just being compassionate yeah. and being open-minded to yes. the experiences of other people and in our community, our government had to do something different or else it would just be a mess. So yes. you mentioned um, your case managers or your case workers. Um, how are they dealing with all of this as far as like now you've had to shift everything to you know, remote platforms, online platforms. They, I'm, sh I'm assuming that their caseload has increased because, you, like you mentioned, there are more people needing services. There are more people being released from um, incarceration. There's more addiction and people relapsing. Like, how are they doing? Well, we just had our weekly staff meeting yesterday, mm -hmm. and some of them did express that they are a bit overwhelmed but mm -hmm. they know that there's a need for their services mm -hmm. and they're managing the best way that they can. Mm -hmm. um, we have urged them though to um, be open and honest with themselves and mm -hmm. with us if they need a break, if they mm -hmm. need some mental health support of their own yeah. you know, because we have professionals on staff, licensed mm -hmm. psychiatrists, and therapists that can counsel the staff as well mm -hmm. so that they don't have to suffer, you know, in silence. I mean, we've had patients die. It's a lot. Yeah. You have people that have co-occurring disorders. So you may have an individual that is mentally ill, but also mm -hmm. has a, 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 a substance abuse yeah. problem, right? Yeah. yeah. I feel like, you know, with all of this discussion about, you know, thank you to our healthcare heroes and, our frontline workers, and um, we this week in New York City, um, uh, uh, an, an ER physician uh, took her own life. I think a lot of the 
uh, discussion has not been placed too much on the mental health community, me mental health therapists, support people, but they are essential. And we literally dump our problems onto them, not assuming that they have their own struggles of uh, that they're dealing with as well. So at a time like this, we need to include our social workers, our mental health workers into that conversation of, you know, recognizing who's on the front line um, and during this crisis in particular. So I just want to salute to you guys and, and those you. like you who, for all that you do, because like I said, you guys get a lot of you get a lot and we're dumping and people are, are things are changing every day and it's a, no small feat to say that you have to you know shift with as as things shift you know as well so um just salute to y'all so next question <laughs> um what are some of the positives that have come out of this situation if there are if there are any? um i think there are a lot of positives actually mm -hmm. you know we've definitely developed a more intimate bond as far as mm -hmm. our staff is concerned mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. because you are forced you know into a a, a, a deeper connection yeah with people under these mm -hmm. circumstances mm -hmm. um we're definitely uh reaching a wider audience because when you have a physical facility that people have to come into versus being able to access your services from the comforts of their own home or mm -hmm. if they're in a homeless shelter or what have you mm -hmm. you're just opening up you know uh, uh, uh to a wider audience more people can we, we have people in other states actually mm -hmm. prior to this happening we were expanding our business in atlanta we had gone mm -hmm. down to see our new facility we were ready to hit the ground running and then this happened but the fortunate part about it is with the change in the hipaa laws and the expansion of telemedicine and what's covered Mm -hmm. you know, via our funding sources and mm -hmm. you know, what we can build to them and so on and so forth, we can still service those populations. We have mental health professionals on the ground mm -hmm. who can service people in any state because now you don't have to be licensed in that specific state. Oh, nice. Uh -huh. Oh, that's the part I forgot to mention. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be licensed in that physical state in order to deliver mental health services to those individuals telemedically because the need is so great. Wow. Right. Okay. So That's I mean, a licensed know. professional. Yeah, a licensed mm -hmm. professional is a licensed professional. Even mm -hmm. in the instance of working in the hospitals now, mm -hmm. these people would not have been able to come here and assist us mm -hmm. if they needed licensing to work here. It was an mm -hmm. emergency situation. You have the expertise. You have the ability to get on a plane and come here. We need you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's really what it boils down to. Okay. Okay. That's helpful to know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, technology has really like opened the door for a lot of us, um, and it's it's a good thing to know that uh, resources like TM Two K are accessing. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not gonna get it right. It's okay. <laughs> accessing all of the available. You know, there's apps. There's all of this available um, uh, technology um, to meet the needs, but also you know, on the back end, you end up growing because of it. So. That's really that's really important. Um, so you mentioned about cup, you know, what's funded. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times, people do not access resources like addiction uh, recovery help and and counseling, and because they feel like there's a cost or they don't have insurance or whatever those financial barriers are, especially in our community. Because, like you said, in Bergen County, your your um, your base is primarily Caucasian. Um, and some of that might be some of the stigma that we have attached in our community, but a lot of that could also be there's a, a conception of what that would cost. So can you just talk about what it costs or how to how people are funded in these programs? Absolutely. So let's not, I think we have a tendency to associate ethnicity with economic status. Mm -hmm. Don't confuse the fact that because we have a large Caucasian client base in Bergen mm -hmm. County that mm -hmm. they are not, you know, in need because yeah. everybody's not in a middle class no. uh, status, right? Mm -hmm. So we accept, you know, all different forms of payment. 
Mm -hmm. Our um, programs and services are fi uh, federally and state funded. So that means that for many of our programs, there is no cost, right? Okay. But for some of our substance abuse treatment programs and mm -hmm. our mental health programs, depending upon how the individual is referred, mm -hmm. right? So you may have an agency such as the Department of Probation, mm -hmm. you know, that may refer a client, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're mandated to come to us for treatment. Right. Okay. So they're billed through their Medicaid or through, you know, the the connection to that agency. Right. But then you may have somebody that comes as a self referral and they have insurance and then we, you know, may build their insurance or we have a sliding scale that's based on your income, whether it be, okay. you know, employment income or state income or whatever mm -hmm. that may be. So mm -hmm. all of our different programs are set up you know, the, the payment uh, arrangement is different based upon the individual's needs, but we never turn anybody okay. away, right? Okay. So depending upon how they fit in, you know, to a particular program or what services they need holistically, we work that out, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, now what we are doing is we're getting ready to expand in many ways just to offer some services to the general public Right yeah. now, our our substance abuse groups and our mental health services are, you know, patients that have already done an intake with us. They're part okay. of our uh, client base and all that other kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But we are going to create some forums where people can just express themselves and how they're feeling mentally mm -hmm. via Zoom in a public setting. Right. Okay. Okay. Just as a courtesy to the community. Yeah. And also, if there is an open forum where they want to discuss some of their substance abuse issues, maybe they haven't gone into treatment. Maybe they don't know what that is, mm -hmm. you know, but mm -hmm. they know that they have some uh, 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 feelings of temptation. Maybe they've overindulged in some things mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they're just concerned about their well-being under these circumstances and they want to explore further. But, okay. you know, so, yeah. Okay, last question. If someone is looking for help, how can they reach you? Okay, so we are on social media at mm -hmm. TM2KINC, right? We're on Facebook. You can also use that to search us on Facebook. Um, and we're also on Twitter. Uh, we can be reached via email at info at TM2KINC.org. Right. Mm -hmm. Or we can still be reached via our numbers, our phone numbers, even though we're not physically in the office. You can reach mm -hmm. us um, in our um, Bergen Passaic facility at 201-487-4700. We can also be reached at um, our Newark, uh, Greater Essex County facility, 973 two seven three zero four two five and you can visit our website at tm2kinc.org okay. and also just so that you guys know we've been in business for 20 years we're actually coming up on our 21st anniversary Yay. in june so we're not new to this we're true to this <laughs> so you know you're safe with us everything is confidential mm -hmm. we're here to serve mm -hmm. you know we've had i've had people that i know personally you know mm -hmm. benefit from our services most mm -hmm. people i try not to uh you know, let them know that I'm associated because mm -hmm. I want them to feel safe and, and mm -hmm. seeking, you know, uh, services with us. But we're here to help everybody. And even if you just want to contact us offline and you don't even know if you want to go into that environment, mm -hmm. I am here to answer your questions, your concerns. If you just need some encouragement and empowerment, mm -hmm. reach out. We're here to help you. Thank you so much, Gray. You and I met through Amber um, Forrester at uh, the Toy Drive, and you guys are all fabulous. Your whole crew is just like so awesome. So and so thank so, you. so thank you for doing this for me, and um, and thank you for sharing all of this information. And let's figure out how we can do something together in the future as well. Absolutely, I truly appreciate it. I think you're doing wonderful things, thanks, thanks, thanks. and I mean, I look forward to partnering with you and, and your platform because I think that you're you've definitely tapped into something and we're we're blessed to have you.
Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, blessed to have you and your mama. Tell me yes, mama thank you. Hello. Thank you. We sure okay, will. I'm going to hop off because we're running out of time. But thank you okay. so much. Have okay. a great day. You too. Thanks. Okay, guys. So that was our um, our uh, show for today, week seven. I forgot to say that at the beginning. This is the seventh episode, seven weeks in. Today we had Assemblywoman Shavonda Sumter, and we just spoke with Gray Booker of Team Management 2000. Um, lots of great info shared. Uh, we really just want to keep this going. I, I want to, like I said, you know, hopefully the, the light at the end of the tunnel is, is going to be shining soon. So uh, we want to start getting into more of a practice of including um, information that's going to help us going forward. Uh, not so much all of the in the in the trenches COVID stuff. Um, we want to also start shining a light on what's next. So um, stay tuned. Um, every week, you know, uh, as far as like some of the behind the scenes inside, every week I'm trying to find guests that uh, kind of go along with this theme that I've uh, established. If you guys know of somebody who's actually doing the work, actually in the trenches, um, actually has information that will help us with our, our own road to recovery, uh, send that to me. Um, you can email me at um, bergenincolor at gmail.com. You can DM me at bergenincolor on Instagram. I'm on Facebook as well. Uh, join our mailing list so that you can get information and updates regarding each week. Um, also, uh, if you're a business owner, again, go ahead and sign up for our free business directory. Uh, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not um, trying to have a network. I just want to connect people to the diversity of Bergen County and beyond. You see it on the back of, of, of my logo. So um, help me in this mission. Uh, like I said, if you're a business owner, sign up. If you're not a business owner, uh, direct your business owning friends to sign up for our, our, our registry. Also, if you haven't done your census, make sure you do your census. Um, do our 2020 survey at bergenandcolor.com. Um, and also, I just want to encourage you guys, like I said, you know, hopefully we'll be able to get back to normal, so well, the new normal soon. So just hang in there. Um, be encouraged. I'm praying for everybody. And I just want you all to be ha happy and healthy and safe. Um, support your local restaurants that are open. We have quite a few of our black and brown owned restaurants that are still taking orders for delivery um, so that we can kind of keep things going economically as well. Um, thank you for joining me. Uh, my name is Tevra Francis and this is Bergen in Color, connecting you to the diversity of Bergen County and beyond. Thank you guys. Have a great day.